Pastor John, in the last podcast, you shared with us about preaching in front of 60,000 students in the Georgia Dome recently at Passion 2013. And you're closely connected with Louis Giglio, and you've been involved with the Passion Conference for many years. I'm, I'm interested to hear from you what your takeaways are from Passion 2013. I don't abstract Passion 2013 from all the Passions beginning in 1997. I've been to all the major American events, and I see passion not just as an event, but as a kind of movement that has lasted and grown. And it all grows out of Isaiah 26, 8, which is where they get the 268 generation, which says, your name and your renown are the desire of our souls. And those two things, renown, the renown of Christ, and the desire of the soul is what binds Louis and me together, Louis Giglio, who who oversees passion. He came to my house in 1997, and we sat down at my dining room table. We didn't know each other, and he had heard and read some things, and he said, I'm looking for a person whose whole message revolves around the glory of God in Christ, and you seem to me to be one of those. And we talked about Christian hedonism and the relationship between desiring God on the one hand, and God being glorified on the other hand. And if you go to their website now, or if you go to their app and look under who we are, they have almost word for word, God is most glorified in us when we're most satisfied in him. That's what unites Louis and me. That's what the movement is. The movement is not about any particular uh, cause. It's about the fame of Jesus. Louis stood up on the last day of this year's Passion, and he said, you would have to be blind not to know that what this is about is Jesus and the fame of Jesus Christ. If you listen to their music and you watch Louis speak, this is about calling a generation, time after time, every new student generation, to rivet their heart's affection and their mind's attention on Jesus Christ and the glory of Jesus Christ, the greatness and grandeur and wisdom, strength and power, blessing, all those things of Jesus Christ. So that, that's, the, that's what keeps my heart beating with passion, that they have focused in the last couple of years now on the human trafficking to, to try to put feet on our passion for Jesus by saying, in Jesus' name and for Jesus' sake, we would love to see this human slavery ended. And I think that's a a beautiful, beautiful cause. One of the reasons I love going back to passion and being a part of it is that it, it embodies something I gave in my last sermon on sorrowful yet always rejoicing. I want so bad to help cultivate in American evangelicalism a tone that is not chipper or glib or playful. And in my 17 years at Passion, I have never heard a joke from the stage. I've never seen a silly skit from the stage. And that's remarkable when you think about it, because a lot of student leaders think you've got to yuck it up with college students and be silly as the latest comedian or the latest talk show host in order to make them feel like you're real. And Louis not like that, and neither is passion. And 60,000 students are coming for a kind of blood earnest singing and preaching event that exalts Jesus Christ. I I just want to encourage um, leaders of students that it is possible to take this vision of sorrowful yet always rejoicing tone and build it into a student ministry. Thank you, Pastor John, and thank you for listening to this podcast. If you have a question for Pastor John, please send it to us via email. Send those questions to askpastorjohn at desiringgod.org. Please include your first name in your hometown. I'm your host, Tony Ranke. Thanks for listening.